today on Running to Him. We evil must become one us. with Christ to be one with each other and protected from the evil one. Today's reading from the reading plan is John 17, verses 1 through 18, 11, and we will concentrate on verses 17, 11, and 12, and 17, 20 through 21. John 17, 11 through 12, and 20 through 21 says this, I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they will be one, even as we are. While I was with them, keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the one son of the perdition, so that your scripture might be fulfilled. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Now, the prayer in John 17 has been called the high priestly prayer, and Jesus prays for his own. Amazingly, Jesus prayed for you and me almost 2,000 years ago, and I'd like to concentrate on the content of that prayer. In verse 21, Jesus begins his prayer for us. We are the recipients of that prayer and the spiritual children of those disciples. We have a relationship with God because of what they did and what all of the generations of followers did for us up to today. It is our responsibility to continue that long history. One of the challenges we as Protestants have is acquiring knowledge about that history. I don't know, but I have a reasonably good idea that it is not only American Protestants who are virtually devoid of that which came before them, but the majority of those who consider themselves Christians as well. Our lack of even a little bit of history creates significant problems both today and in the future. Now, I once taught a series of classes entitled The Councils and the Cults. My basic premise was that the seven ecumenical councils, meaning the entire church, answered the false theology of the prevalent cults in their day, and as it happens in ours as well. For example, the first council at Nicaea, AD 325, showed that Christ is fully man and fully God. The first council at Constantinople in AD 381 defined the Trinity, one God and three persons. The council at Chalcedon in AD 451 addressed Christ's nature as fully God and fully man with no mixture. And the Second Council of Constantinople in A.D. 553 defined who Mary is and gave her the name of God-carrier rather than Christ-carrier, further defining the two natures of Christ. Unfortunately, few people know our Christian history, and therefore we are divided because of people's ideas rather than knowing the truth. Christ's prayer concerning our well-being is needed even more today as heresies are gaining ground. Our protection from heresy is to know what and why we believe. We are to become one with Christ, and we must participate in God's nature by utilizing that which he has given us. In 2 Peter 1, verses 2 through 4, Peter writes, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness, through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence, For by these he has granted us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. We must become one with Christ, so that we are one with each other and protected from evil. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.